praise God. Glory to God. DCC, how you doing? You're doing great? Awesome. I love, I love how PK explained eagle's wings. All right, don't lose that picture. All right? Chickens have to... All right, the eagle want to... Who's ready for that this year? Who's experiencing that this year? All right, so this is just a powerful place to be. This is great. I want to appreciate PK. I want to appreciate PM. It's, it's huge, really. It's just, it's a privilege to be here, to be part of this year's team, and I do not take it for granted. It's a big privilege also to be day one. <laughs> you know, to be day one. So, and I believe that from here on out, it's just, all right, it's just catapults, you know, again and again. All right. Praise God. Good to be here. Please be seated. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greetings from my family. Greetings from, with plenty of love from the people over there. <laughs> Some are watching right now, praying right now, just excited to be, to be a part of this. Thank you, Jesus. So like PK will say, DJ, are you ready? <laughs> Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. In Isaiah chapter 60, oh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say, I'm ready. All right, say in the name of Jesus. I believe that I receive revelation, illumination, impartation. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah 60 is one of those places in the Bible where there's dual interpretation. So when you look through, you have to understand who is being talked to and what is being said. You always have to do that. Because sometimes you could interpret any things in the Bible, just one track. I'll give you a few examples that I'm sure you're already familiar with. For instance, when David was going to build God a house, God told the prophet to go tell David, you will not build me a house, but your son will build that house. All right, but God now said that your son will build me the house and the house will last forever. That was not Solomon. All right, Solomon didn't build that kind of house. So God was talking about Solomon, but about Jesus all at the same time. All right? Another example, when God was talking to Abraham, and God said to Abraham, your seed, your seed, your seed. Paul tells us in Galatians 3 that that seed was not Isaac, the seed was Christ. All right? So you have to understand dual interpretation in Bible study. All right? So there might be the immediate person the scripture is referring to, but then there's a prophetic person the scripture is being directed to. So you have to understand, so Isaiah 60 is one of those places, all right? Isaiah 60 deals with the Jews, all right, in its immediate prophetic interpretation. It deals with the Jews directly. It's talking to Jerusalem. It's talking to them. However, prophetically also, it's talking about the church of Jesus Christ. Now, when you don't understand this thing and you want to be a sincere Bible student, you will see that kind of verse and you won't want to confess it or quote it or claim it, so to say, because you feel, I don't think it's for me. You're being sincere, but actually that sincerity is shrouded with ignorance because you don't know that that was for you. So Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1, and I know you know it, all right, tells us to arise, shine. Why? Your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And I want you to understand that by the end of tonight, you'll be confessing that thing very well. All right? Because, listen, 2024, this year that you are flying on eagle's wings, all right, it's arising. All right, you will be shining because your light has come and that the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Say amen. amen. Now, when it comes to conversations about the glory of God, um, the church is a bit um, either spooky or not too clear and We've all been there, I've been there, but then it needs to get clearer. Why? Because God said, all right, in Numbers 14, that as truly as I live, the whole earth will be filled with my glory. 
Then he said in Habakkuk chapter 2 that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. So there has to be, number one, a revelation of the glory of God. Number two, there has to be a manifestation of the glory of God. So Isaiah 1 to 3. Let's do 1 and 2 first. It says what? Arise, shine, your light has come. The glory of the Lord is what? Reason upon you. Verse 2 now. Let, let's see verse 2. It says darkness will cover where? Is it happening already? And it might happen some more. Get ready for that. So, and you have to understand that the news that is given to the world is not the news that is given to the church. So all because we, the church, are living in the world, we have to understand how to separate the information we're receiving. All right, when they say there's a casting down, we have to say there's a lifting up. But if you spend time hearing so much of casting down, you'll be thinking casting down. Watch this. Even when you experience casting down, experience, listen please, because I'm experiencing it doesn't make it my true reality. I have to use the word of God to make that experience align to God's plans and purposes for my life. So you don't say, well, I'm experiencing it. Is it not real? No. I'm experiencing it because life wants me to accept it as my normal. I'm experiencing it because that's what the situation wants to become. But I decide I don't want this one in my life. All right? You have to understand that when there is a storm, Jesus was in the boat, he was sleeping, there was a storm, but then he got up and spoke to the storm. Some of us will say, well, if there could be a storm, maybe God sent it. No. All right? So all because there is an experience, all because there's a negative situation or circumstance does not mean you accept it. The church has to rise up again in the authority of Matthew chapter 18, where Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven. The Amplified says it in the reverse, but it's also still fine. It says, whatever you bind on earth, knowing it is already bound by heaven, which puts a responsibility on you to know what the word has already said. So it's fine. And you know, if you look into the word, God did not send that storm. So I can say, in Jesus' name, I bind you. I refuse you. Are you getting this now? So when ugly experiences come your way, you don't have to accept it. You, you don't have to. You put your foot down and say, nope, I know what the word said. So that verse 2 says, darkness will come upon the earth, deep darkness, the people. That's Isaiah 60 verse 2. But while there's darkness upon the earth and upon the people, what did he say about you? What did he say about you? What did he say about you? So when there's news of darkness and there's actual darkness, what should you be busy focusing on? Shining. The light. The glory. Say glory. glory. Say it. Say glory. glory. Now, if you grew up in certain circles or had the opportunity to be around certain people, you would have heard a version of the glory message that is a bit on the negative. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 tells us for all have sinned and are falling short of the glory of God. But it is scripture, so it is true. However, which we won't do today, you have to look at context. What is he saying and why did he say it? All right? He was talking about the state of man as a result of the fall of Adam. So all have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. But question is, is that where the story ended? So we have to see it. And you have to see it in scripture to know this thing belongs to me. And this is how. Because I don't know if it's happened to you like it sometimes has happened to me. You are trying to confess a verse, but then you are being questioned in your mind about the authority and the conviction of that verse. Are you sure? And then you have to dig and yeah, I found it. This is it. Or the Holy Spirit just shows it to you. Say Glory. This, this glory is serious business. Now, when we talk about glory, the church is a bit um, spooky about it. And part of it is okay. The other part, no. And this is what I mean. When you hear glory, or when they say the glory of God was in that place, 
the number one thing that might come to our mind is there was a cloud. All right, the place was, and it's scriptural. And the most popular place for that, all right, was in the dedication of Solomon's temple. So just so that someone sees that, Second Chronicles chapter 5, we'll just see 13 and 14 quickly. Second Chronicles chapter number 5, the dedication of Solomon's temple. So beautiful. It says, and it even came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one. They blended in unity to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good and his mercy and just forever, then what happened? Then the house was filled with the cloud, even the house of the Lord. I can't get into all of that today, but understand that they produce the glory by praise and by being in unity. All right? We can't get into all that. We need to just set an important foundation. Next verse, please. So that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. Why? For the glory of the Lord. Whoosh! And it's good. All right? I've not seen that too many times, but when you see it, it's good. When you just see that cloud, it's misty. Sometimes you have seen it, you didn't know that was it. You thought your house was filled with dust. You were opening window and curtain. It wasn't dust. There was a presence of God there. That was tangible and manifest, but you didn't know that that was it. Anybody thinking about what I just said now? Anybody feeling like you might have seen something before? Everybody just looked foggy. You start opening curtain and window. It wasn't fog. Inside your house, something was happening. You were producing something. You were producing power. You were producing grace and glory. It was filling up. But you just felt, this place is foggy, open window. Maybe not. Sometimes also we have angelic manifestations that they don't show up. You know? But because we are more unconsciously trained to think of demons, you sat in your house and it was as if somebody passed beside you. You sat on your own and it was as if someone standing behind you. First thought was demon. Why? Are you the devil's child or God's child? We have more angels than we have demons. And Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that we have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. But we're not aware. Sometimes that presence, you are on the road, all alone, driving, like another car passed beside you, there was no other car. They were just telling you, we are here. But you were waiting to see them. No, they just give you an idea. We're here. I'm around. I passed. I'm standing. Same for the glory. So while there is that, you know, heavy manifestation of the glory of God in cloud, and while that is the most popular definition or experience or expression of glory, which is referred to as the Shekinah, that is not the only operation of glory interestingly i'll give you one in john chapter 2 when jesus turned water to wine see what john said about it in john chapter 2 verse 10 we we'll see 10 and 11 jesus turns water to wine and it said all right that's when the governor of the feast was talking every man at the beginning sets forth good wine and when men are well drunk then that which is worse but you have kept the good wine until now next verse now please this beginning of what miracles did jesus in cana of galilee and manifested forth glory and his disciples believed in him so a manifestation of glory is also in the miraculous so according to you know second chronicles that we saw earlier glory can be the manifest presence of god and it is the manifest presence of god but glory also from this John chapter 2 is a demonstration of the power of God. Are you seeing that now? So glory is the presence. Glory also is the power. When you check the, you know, the Hebrew words and the Greek words for glory, you find other words like weighty, like honor, like splendor. But I'm just playing around a few, not all of them tonight, because we need to drive at something. In Genesis chapter number 30, Verse 43 of Genesis 30, there's something in Bible study called the law of first mention. 
So where you check the first time the word was used and why it was used. So let's see why glory was used here. Genesis 30 and then verse 43. And the man, talking about Jacob, and the man increased how? Uh-uh. He didn't increase. How did he increase? Exceeding increase is different from increase. Anybody increase in 2023? So you know what 2024 will look like? Exceeding. Exceeding. All right? It would exceed it. It will surpass it. Are you understanding that? It would overtake it by leaps and bounds. So he didn't just increase. How did he increase? How are you increasing in 2024? Oh, DCC, talk to me tonight. How are you increasing in 2024? How are you increasing in 2024? And it's not by power. It's not by might. It's on eagle's flight. Are you understanding that? Now, we need to now see, that was chapter 30, verse 43. Now we see chapter 31, verse 1. It's just the next verse after that. It was just broken into the next verse. Watch this. And he heard, hold on, he heard the words of Laban's sons saying, Jacob had taken away all that our father has, and of that which was our father, he has gotten all this. All what? What do you think they were describing? Wealth. So glory is presence. Glory is power. Glory is wealth. So when we go back to Isaiah chapter 60, arise and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The presence of the Lord is risen upon you. The power of God is risen upon you. The wealth of God is risen upon you. And the word glory means to wait, something to be heavy. So it means the heavy presence of God is risen upon you. The heavy power of God is manifested through you. And the heavy wealth of God is showing through you. Are you feeling this thing already? And glory is so important to the Godhead. Glory actually is one of the most revered words in the entire Bible. One of the most revered. When you talk about the glory of God, it talks about awe, respect, reverence. Everybody's quiet. People can't stand. Even Moses couldn't stand. All right? Couldn't enter the tabernacle. All because of that glory. So glory carries all with it. Ephesians chapter number 1 from the 16th verse. Paul from 15 was explaining the reason why he needed to pray about 16 because he just want to show you something in 17. Wherefore, when I heard of these things in love, you know, love for saints, you know, faith in Christ, 16, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Look at 17, please. This is what he started with. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, next phrase, so amongst the revelations of God, he's called the father of glory. Father means source. All right? It means the thing emanates from him. So where does glory come from? Who is the source of glory? So God is called the source of glory. So what about Jesus? I'll begin with the one you know. Well, two of them you even know. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 8. Glory is a serious deal to the Trinity. 1 Corinthians 2 and 8. It says, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified. So God is the father of glory. Jesus is the. Are you noticing the words there now? This one, most of you know it. And well, Anyway, you know it. <laughs> In Psalm chapter 2. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I love this. I just thank you, Father. We give you praise. No, I, I was going to say 22. Psalm, no, no, Psalm 24, rather, verse 7. Psalm 24, we read from 7 to 10. Are you there? You've seen it already. You know it. What does he say? Lift up your heads, O ye gates. So imagine you telling 2024, lift up your heads. Lift up your heads, O ye gates of 2024. Be ye lifted up, you doors. Why? Let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Let's keep going. Lift up your heads. O ye gates, be ye lifted up. 
ye everlasting doors. Who? So that the king of glory come. I've jumped to the next verse already. Next verse, let's jump. <laughs> Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. So God is the father of glory. Jesus is the Lord of glory. Jesus is the king of glory. First Peter chapter number 4 and verse 14. First Peter chapter 4 and then verse 14. It says, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, happy are you. Why? The spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. All right? On their own part, he's spoken of evilly. On your own part, he's glorified. But do you see what he called the Holy Spirit there? What do you call him? Spirit of glory. He's a custodian of glory. He's a communicator of glory. He's a carrier of the glory. So Father of glory, Lord of glory, King of glory, Spirit of glory, the Godhead. And listen, if your Bible revelation does not elevate you, you're not finished. If you study scripture and it leaves you behind, you're not complete in your study. Let me explain what I'm saying. I understand when we teach faith and we need to teach faith from the point of receiving and we explain how to receive like the woman with the issue of blood. I completely understand it. As a Bible teacher, we do it and it's okay in its context. But every time, don't keep seeing yourself as a woman with the issue of blood. Be switching. Come to where Jesus is. Let the people that are not saved be women with the issue of blood, trying to touch you. Because the whole essence of redemption, the whole essence of salvation, was that God had one son, gave the son, so that he may have more sons. But somewhere in our minds, what do we have? Jesus resurrected and then he forgot us behind. So he's high up in heaven. So we sing songs and we sing to him. There's no better place to be than at your feet. Did he tell you that? There's no verse for that. All right? What he said to you is that you're made to sit together with him in heavenly places. So there's no better place to be than at his side. Not at his feet. I know we're trying to be humble. But humility that doesn't have scriptural basis is not humility. It's ignorance. Alright? If PK invites you, say come and spend the night. And he gives you a room. And there's fridge there and everything there. Nice bed. Just say okay, see you in the morning. Then he comes back and meets you on the floor. You say why? Say I just didn't want to disturb your bed. You know you're being humble, but would he be pleased? And then the fridge, you didn't touch it. But inside your bag, you have put a pa, granite inside. All right? And, you know, 10 naira biscuits. So that's why you're munching with pure water. He said, why didn't you say, ah, I didn't want to disturb what you have. Would he be pleased? Jesus shed his blood. Jesus suffered. Jesus died. He resurrected. So that he can elevate you. So that you and I can be seated together with him in heavenly places. And then we say, Jesus, sit. Just sit. Stay. I want to be humble. That's not humility. The best way to say thank you to him is to walk in the reality of what he died for. To sit where he puts you. To stand where he puts you. To exert authority over the devil like he expects you to. Do you understand? You are not an outsider. You are an insider. You know, there was one you know, conversation P.K. and I had that we recorded and we talked about some of these things. The way you pray about the mercy of God. Are you praying from outside or inside? Oh God, have mercy on me. Are you blind Bartimaeus? You don't pray like blind Bartimaeus. You don't use verses like that. The mercy of God is your birthright. You don't beg for it. The, day, the way you got saved was a result of mercy. All right? Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 says, For God so rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we're dead in trespasses and sins, made us alive together with Christ, by grace are you saved, 
and he has raised us up together with him and made us sit together with him in heavenly places. That's Ephesians, you know, chapter 2, verse from 4 to 6. So it was his mercy that elevated you to that chair. Oh, have mercy on me. How did you get to the chair? So when our Bible study keeps leaving us behind, it's not complete. So he's the king of kings. So where are the other kings? But it looks like he's the king of servants and slaves, right? Say, I'm shining. I'm arising. My light has come. And the glory of the Lord says upon me. Are you sure you get this? Amen. We're getting it. We believe for it. So we said God is the Father of glory. Jesus is the Lord of glory. Jesus is the King of glory. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of glory. So where does that leave us? Back again to that. You know, Romans 3.23, the Bible says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's true. Adam fell, so it affected everybody. So let's see Adam's state. Psalm chapter 8 and then the fourth verse. Psalm 8 verse 4. What is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him. Next verse, please. What did God to do to Adam? For you made him a little lower than the angels and then did what? The word crown there is not just crown on top of the head. It means to surround someone with something. To encompass somebody with something. So when Adam said he was naked, he actually became naked. He was not created naked. He was wearing a glory cloth. What is man that you are mindful of him? You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him. So Adam was not naked. Adam was wearing something. So it connects to Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fallen short. So he lost the glory realm. Are you getting that now? So you guys wear nice things. You think you're dripping. You need to see Adam's drip. Adam's drip was glory. Do you understand? Adam's drip was glory. No animal could attack him. Nothing could affect him. Everything was peaceful around him. Everything was blessed. Everything was grace. Everything was communicating glory. That was his drip. Do you understand? Not just cloth, not just shoe, not just perfume. He wore the drip. He was wearing God's own drip. That's why, listen, when God said, let's see how he would name all the animals. Adam named them. God could not correct it. All right? He named them with accuracy. He named them with precision. Adam finished. God said, good job. Do you understand? So you have to know where Adam fell from, which connects to that all sinned and fell short of the glory. But the story did not end there. Hebrews chapter number 2 verse 10. Talking about Jesus, the captain of our salvation. Bible says, for it became him. For whom are all things and by whom are all things. Finish the rest. Bringing many sons. Where? So God gave it to Adam. Adam lost it. Jesus came to bring us back into it. So where do you think you are now? What, what trip do you think you're wearing now? So that's number one way to connect it for you. Number two, Galatians chapter 4 verse 6. All right? Adam lost it. Jesus connected it and got it back for you. Galatians 4 verse 6, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart crying, Abba Father, verse 7, wherefore, look at this, you are no more what? Servant, but what? Son, and if you are a son, what are you? In simple English, hair means someone that is inheriting something. All right? In our case, God would not need to die because he can never die before we inherit, right? So if God is Father of glory, Jesus is Lord of glory, Holy Spirit is Spirit of glory, and you are the heir of God, what are you inheriting? I'm, I'm building it. All right? Romans 8 and then the 17th verse. Romans 8, 17. 
So that when you go back to Isaiah 60 and say, the glory of the Lord is upon me, you will know I'm saying the right thing. I mean, I don't mean me. You will know you. When you say it, you will know I'm saying the right thing. It says, and if children, then what? Hairs. Hairs of God and what now? Joint hairs. So I'm not just inheriting what God has. I'm, I'm in, listen now. I have equal access to everything Jesus has. Joint hair. Mm -mm. Jesus is not inheriting land on Banana Island. So that you get your facts correct. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory. Concerning kingdom, Jesus said, it is my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Thine is the kingdom, but father has given it. Thine is the power, all power I give you. So kingdom, given. Power, given. John chapter 17, verse 22. John 17, 22. Are you ready for this one? And the glory that you gave me, I am about to give it to them. And the glory you gave me, I will give them after 30 days of prayer and fasting. And the glory you gave me, I will give them if they are serious with their Christianity. What did he say? So that. So that. So that. So, listen, if I am heir of God and joint heir with Jesus, it means everything he has, I have. And there's scripture for it. So next time when you are singing, he will never share glory. Pause first. Pause. Come and check. He has shared this one. Now, in context, now that song would refer to praise. Praise belongs to God. We will be arsenal to think we can collect praise. I'm sure you already know that it's not for you. But the glory, how would they know you are God's son? There's a revelation on circumcision, but off point, but you, let me drop it here. When God made a covenant with Abraham, he told him to circumcise himself, yes or no? Circumcision is done in a place nobody can see. Why? We don't need to see it because we need to see the effect. How do I know when you're circumcised? I don't mean now that it's medically accepted and people are doing it every day. Back then, it was just a covenant God gave Abraham. It means now that you have done this, you're in a covenant with me. Whatever I have, you have. Let me not get too far on that. But this is all I'm saying. Circumcision was done in a secret place. Right? So when David stood and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? How did he know? Already because only them circumcised, so he knew, because it's not obvious. So how do you tell a circumcised man? When you see the things happening around him, we try to push you down, you didn't fall. We try to make you fail, you didn't fail. Things were tough, you came out of it. Things crashed on you, you came out alive. Everything, everything scattered, everything built up again. You must have a covenant with someone higher than you. Are you circumcised? And in the New Testament, our circumcision now went deeper. It's not in the flesh. It's in the spirit. So how would they know? We dress like them. We look like them. We sound like them. We enter the same bus. We walk in the same office. We stay in the same place. But things are different. Things are different. Things are different. My result is different. My life is different. Because I have a covenant. Because for the old covenant, there was a type of circumcision. So the new covenant has a higher type of circumcision. Are you getting this? What he has, he gave you. So did he give you the glory? That John 17, 22 again said, The glory you have given me, I have given it to them. Meaning Jesus is saying, Father, the same glory you got, that you gave me, I gave this person. Back again to Isaiah 60. The glory of the... So when the devil says, how did you get it? He gave it to 2024, you are rising. In this 2024, you are shining. 
because your light has come do you know christ is your light so that scripture is for you so 2024 you are rising you are shining you are expanding you are exploding things are working things are moving because your light has come and the glory of god is upon you so question again did jesus give you his glory do you have a verse to prove it more than one actually remember that hebrews 2 10 he came to restore sons back into glory adam lost it he gave it to us all right and if i may join here with him then what he has i have and he proved it by saying i have given you say the glory of the lord is upon me can you help me preach it to like three people around you the glory of the lord the glory of the lord the glory of the lord it's the glory of the lord it means the presence of god is upon me it means the power of god is upon me it means the wealth of god the wealth of god the splendor of god it's upon me listen 2024 you cannot face it by yourself you face it with a higher power all right you face it with the glory of god you face it with all that god has made available to you so let's see a little bit about this glory thing oh dear lord so i said in psalm chapter 8 verse 5 he said what is man that you're mindful of him all right it says you surrounded him you crowned him with glory and honor i said the word crown there means to surround it actually means to compass for good or evil but usually for good in your own case because he surrounded you to protect you so say this the glory of the lord is upon me now say the glory of the lord surrounds me so we picked up on from isaiah 60 we pick surround now from now there's a version of psalm 8 in hebrews because the writer of hebrews was now making reference to psalm 8 but the Greek word used there wasn't surround. It's to adorn somebody. It's like when they wear a ceremonial wreath around your neck. That's drip. So the glory of the Lord is upon me. The glory of the Lord surrounds me. The glory of the Lord is my decoration. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8. It's talking about the benefits of fasting. Alright? But that verse 8 shows one of the things that glory knows how to do. It says, then your light will break forth as the morning, and your health will spring forth speedily, and your righteousness will go before you. And what will happen? Rear guard, I understand, is, is old grammar. Rear guard means the soldiers that are lining up behind you to protect you. So the glory of the Lord is upon you, surrounds you, decorates you, protects you. Okay, can we see what NLT, let's, let's, NLT, then I like MSG, NLT, MSG, NLT, see this. Then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will do what? Oh, so someone says it's not safe you are not protected say i got glory so when you talk glory it's not just smoke smoke is good cloud is good but i'm understanding now that glory is also protection so if i say the glory of the lord is upon me it means i'm protected who has the glory of the lord in this place say it's upon me it surrounds me it decorates me it protects me are you seeing this this one you know it Philippians 4 and verse 19 Philippians 4 19 but my God shall supply all my need how what did you say according to where uh -uh. according to meaning the glory of God is upon me 
surrounds me, adorns me, protects me. Now the glory is my supplier. You know, there's a way we charismatically can shout, glory! We need to know what we are shouting. So when I say glory, I'm shouting protection. When I see the bills and they are not sorting, and I shout glory, I'm shouting supply, 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 supply. When I'm in a panic mode and I don't know what to do and I shout glory, I mean protection, protection, protection. I'm not begging for it. And because angels operate in the glory. When the shepherds were watching the flock by night, the Bible said an angel appeared before them and the glory of God shone all up. Anywhere there's glory, there's angel. So when you shout glory! 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 The glory is your inheritance. Jesus gave it to you. You are the heir of God. Are you getting this? You are not begging for it. Oh, no, Father. 2024. Give me glory. Hey, yeah, yeah. He had given it to us a long time ago. We are the ones just finding out. Shout glory. glory. Say it on me. It surrounds me. It protects me. It adorns me. It supplies me. It's my inheritance. Say I walk in the glory. I walk in the glory. I walk in the glory. I function in the glory. I function by the glory. The glory of the Lord. It's the glory of the Lord. It's the glory of the Lord. Do you understand this? You say, but I don't see it yet. We don't walk by sight. In John chapter 11, all right, verse 40 of John 11, Jesus was at the tomb of Lazarus. And you know the story. Jesus got there late. The sisters had complained. If you had come earlier, ugh. Jesus said, where did you bury him? We need to go and remove stone. Sister said, by now, he's thinking. See the answer Jesus gave her. Verse 40, please. John eleven forty, 40. Jesus said unto her, Did I not say to you, if you would what? What will happen? Brother, brother dead for four days. Jesus said, believe. Glory will show up. So if I need to unlock glory, what do I do? Believe it. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Say the glory of the Lord is upon me. The glory of the Lord. It surrounds me. The glory of the Lord. It adorns me. The glory of the Lord. It protects me. The glory of the Lord. It supplies. And what did he say will supply? All your need. Context might be finance. Maybe, maybe not. If your own is not finance, if his baby is still supply. If his job is still a supply. It didn't say it will just supply your financial need. He said it will supply all your need. Oh, 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 oh. You know the way we do here. Even when they ask you, can you supply something and you don't know how, we like to say, I'll supply. Anytime there's a need, glory says, I can supply. I am your supplier. Just tell them you have a supplier. All right? So 2024, the gates are open for glory to flow. The gates are open for glory to flow. All right? Because we believe it. And Jesus said, when you believe, what do you do? You will see the glory. But we don't just believe alone. Like PK said earlier, you believe and speak. Because believing and speaking go together. Believing is of the heart. The speaking releases the power. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 says, We have in the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken we also believe and therefore so do you believe what then should you do say the glory of the lord is upon me it surrounds me it adorns me it protects me 
it supplies there's Romans 6 and 4 alright sit please thank you Romans 6 and 4 Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised from the dead how Christ was raised from the dead how by the glory of the father we also should walk in newness of life it means Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory now Romans 8 11 Romans 8 11 you know it already right if the spirit of him but Romans 6 4 said he was raised by the glory Romans 8 11 says he was raised by the because spirit is glory glory is spirit oh come on so what will the spirit do he that raised up Jesus from the dead would also give life to your body. Meaning the presence of the glory brings you healing. Because since the spirit is in you, the glory is in you. Colossians 2, I mean 1, 7, 27 says Christ is where? Is in you the hope of glory. Hope there is no future, future. Expectation. When you start believing, start expecting. Every day expect a manifestation of favor. Expect a manifestation of kindness. Expect a manifestation. Just expect the glory. Because it has to happen. Now, 1 Peter 4.14. 4, we saw it earlier. We'll see it again. Then we'll start wrapping this up. Thank you, Father. Say glory. glory. Oh, say glory. glory. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. Why? Where is the spirit of glory? Where, where, where is he? Where is he? Where is he, where is he resting? You know the meaning of rest? He's relaxed. So the spirit is in you. The spirit is on you. So the glory is in you. Glory is on you. Glory is around you. Glory is behind you. Glory is your decoration. Who are you? Who, who are you? Who, who, who are you? Who are you? Huh? Who? Who? You? Who? Glory on top, behind, front, center, back, around, inside your bank account, at your office, everywhere, every, everywhere is just glory. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. <laughs> glory to God. Say glory! glory. Oh! Are you ready for this one? And we know that all things work together for good to them that are called uh, to them who are called according to his purpose to them I love that I'm called according to his purpose <laughs> alright let's go I'm going to 30 actually let's go moreover whom he did predestinate he also called to be what alright called you know to be no 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 to, no, 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 no 29 we skip 29 oh because I said I was going to 30 no let's read down let's read down 28, 29. For whom he foreknew, he did pray to be what? Conformed to the image so that he may become what? Jesus is not only begotten. He was only begotten. Today he is firstborn. Alright? So when you're singing Jesus only begotten, no he's not. He was. God gave his only begotten so that he would no longer have one begotten. He wants to have plenty begottens. You understand that English tonight? All right, that's why you are joint hair. You are his brother. All right, hold on now, hold on. Are you ready for the next one? Tighten seat belts. <laughs> Let's go. Thirty. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he called. Did he call you? Whom he called, he. Whom he justified. Are you still here? Not he will glorify. Not he is about to glorify. Amplify classic, please, for this one. Do you know who you are? You are glorified. As in he died, he picked you up and made you sit beside him. Amplified says, and those whom he thus foreordained, he also called. Those whom he called, he also justified, acquitted, made righteous. You know you are the righteousness of God, right? 
made righteous, putting them in right standing with himself. Are you ready for the last one? Those whom he justified, he also raising them to a heavenly dignity and standard or state of being. The moment you got saved, your standard changed. Your condition changed. You say, hey, you don't know my condition. No, you are looking at your physical condition. Start looking at your spiritual condition. You have been raised to a heavenly condition. The condition there is not the condition here. So your job is to take the condition there and impose it on the condition here. And say, listen, I'm not of this place. Oh. They say some of us are not normal. Yes, yeah, some of us are not normal. Some, some of us are not here. You understand? We're not from here. We are from a higher place. And our job is to bring the revelation there and put it here. Not to start crying, oh God, see my condition. No, this is your condition. You've been elevated. You have been glorified. <laughs> oh, glory. Glory is on you, around you, behind you, resting on you, within you, on top of you, defending you, supplying. It's your inheritance. Now you're finding out, I, even me, I'm glorified. What? What? I'll end on this one. All right? Because I needed to end first from that one. The glory attracts. Now let's go to Isaiah 60, where we started from. Oh, thank you, Father. <laughs> glory to God. Say glory attracts. 2024. All right. Let me say it to you. In 2024, mind what you are pursuing. The things you want to pursue are attracted naturally by the glory. When you focus on the glory, it attracts those things. Follow the glory. Protect the glory. Wake up and talk about the glory. All right? It might not be glory in itself, but you're praising him, you're worshiping him. Create an atmosphere of the glory. Speak glory words. Focus on glory. Let your ways be straight. Do glory things. Maintain glory standard. You will see that glory attracts. Isaiah 60. Arise! <laughs> Shine! For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is where? Do we have New Testament verses for that now? Glory of the Lord. Jesus gave you his glory. Reason upon you, resting on you. Is it clear from New Testament? We can come back here now and tabernacle. This verse, this chapter belongs to us. We have entered New Testament to go and pull it out. This thing is for us. Are you ready now? Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord. Listen. Sometimes when we say these kinds of things, some of you, depending on where you're coming from, your background, you feel they don't understand. I don't think me, PK... We, we, we can't always try to glorify the devil or our past or the things we suffered or went through so that he can be believing what we are teaching. If he's suffering, I think we also have naturally physical... There were times we didn't have. You've seen those PK's old pictures now. <laughs> that PK and PK, you know they are different. So the picture alone should tell you there's a lot of faith that has gone... Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's not every time we need to explain, do you know where we're coming from? Are you getting that? Because sometimes some people use, allow that to affect their receiving of the word. See, you people, Shebi, they say you, you are from Canada. You don't understand me. I don't have to tell you where I'm coming from. Huh? I was working in church office in year 2000 on Pasalan. There was no transport fare. I've walked from Ogba, Thomas, Alakos Street to Abuli Egba, Uton bus stop before. So just to give you an idea, in the name of us, we must do this work of the Lord. End of conversation. Yeah, so that we don't magnify all of that to make a point every time. Something brought us out. Something worked. Something is still working. And I'm saying that because you might be there like, how is my life going to be? The glory will supply it. The glory will supply it. The glory will supply it. You say people have disappointed me. The glory will supply all right, shine, your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. All right, verse 3. What does he say? Oh, well, verse 2. Oh, okay, now, notice something. I'll make it quick. Notice the word come. 
What's mean of come? Zo, bia, I mean, what? Uh, come. It means something is moving towards you. Gentiles will come where? It's come there. So Gentiles means nations. Maybe God gave you a dream and it's still in one room in your house here. Nations are responding to you. Because the glory is attracting nations. People of different color, creed, races, whatever it is, the glory is attracting them. Gentiles will come and who else is coming? Next verse, let's go. Lift up your eyes round about and see. All of them are gathering together. They will come. Who are the people coming now? Sons are coming from afar. Daughters, whether business associates, whether employees, whatever it is, they are what? And if it's biological children too, what are they doing? Next verse, let's go. All right, let's go, let's go. Then you will see and flow together your heart to be enlarged. Why? The abundance of the sea will be what? Is coming. That's all he's saying. And the forces of the Gentiles will check that word forces. It means wealth. Next verse. Let's go. What else is coming? Multitude of camels. We don't drive camel now. We drive truck. We drive SUV. We drive whatever it is. They are coming. They will cover your, your land, your cap, cap back. All right. The drumbeats of Midian and Ephah, those ones are smaller animals to the camels. So big truck is coming. 9 11 is coming. 18 wheeler is coming. Kai is coming. It's just glory. All right. All of them from Sheba shall. Did you see come there again? They will bring what? So they are not coming alone. It's not empty camel. It's not empty car. It's coming with something. Will you know bring gold and incense and show for the praise of oh my God? Oh, where do we skip to? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Verse 7. All the flocks of Kida shall is that not coming to gather together unto you the rams of Nebot? All right, shall minister to you, they shall come up with acceptance on my altar. God said, I will glorify the house of my glory. You are that house. Let's skip eight. <laughs> no, nine. Let's go to nine. Let's go to nine. 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 Hallelujah. This is eight. Let's see. Nine. Surely the islands will wait for me. The ships of Tarshish will come first. They will bring my sons from afar. They are gold and silver. So people are coming with substance, with wealth, with increase, with riches. Right? Let's skip. Let's do 11. Therefore, who, who's ready? Therefore, your gates will be open continually. They will not be shut day or night. That men may bring unto you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings will be brought to you. So your gate is open. Thank God for online banking 24 hours of the day. Our gates are open continually. So it's the gatekeeper that needs to use mouth to open that gate. God, are you understanding me now? Are you understanding me now? Say glory! <laughs> Verse 13. Verse 13. The glory of Lebanon shall do what? Lebanon had trees those days. We, we need tech. So the tech of Japan, the tech of Germany, the tech of wherever. So we don't need tree. I'm not building house with wood. I don't need to say that from Lebanon. All right? But it just means that something that is known or a place is known for is attracting its way to you or it's been attracted. The glory of Lebanon will come to you, the fir tree, pine tree, box tree, to beautify my sanctuary. And you are the new temple of, the God, of God, right? Verse what now? 17. Would you, I, instead of brass, I'll give you gold. Levels are changing. Instead of brass, I'll give you gold. Instead of iron, I'll bring you silver. Instead of wood, I'll give you brass. For stones, I'll give you iron. I will make your officers peace and your executors righteousness. Look at the next one for protection. Violence will no more be heard on your land. This, you might not be able to stop it from happening to your neighbor, but you can stop it from happening to yourself. Stand on the glory verse. Glory is on top, behind, around. Wasting or destruction within your borders will not happen anymore, but you will call your walls salvation. And your gates will be called. Let's stop at 19. Glory to God. It's 19. The sun shall be no more your light by day. means natural things can't sustain you anymore. Neither for brightness will the moon give you light, but the Lord himself, the Lord himself will be your everlasting light. God himself will be your glory. Do you understand this? Do you understand this? So go home, look at Isaiah 60. See for yourself, the glory attracts. Anytime there's the glory, things will come. So if I focus on glory in 2024, things will come to me. How do I focus on it? I believe it. I speak it. 
I expect it. I create an environment of, for it. I worship, I praise, I study, I speak. I do the things I need to do. Are you getting this tonight? Say glory. Say glory. Say glory. Say glory. Say, glory. Say the glory of the Lord. It's my inheritance. The glory of the Lord. It is my portion. The glory of the Lord is upon me. The glory of the Lord, it surrounds me. The glory of the Lord, it decorates my life. The glory of the Lord, it protects me from behind. The glory of the Lord, it supplies for me. The glory of the Lord, it heals me. The glory of the Lord is resting upon me. The glory of the Lord is attracting things to me. Say, man, come. Money comes. Opportunities come. Favor comes. Good things come. Because I have the glory and I am glorified. Shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.